Hey folks, welcome back. As you can tell, I dusted off the snow, I took the coat off, and I'm sitting right here inside in the hot seat. This is the spot that I edit all my videos, and I'm sitting here today because I want to show you something that has changed with some of the woodland mills, sawmills that are out there. If you've seen my other videos, you'll probably know already that I own a Woodland Mills HM130. I've had it for a number of years, and I've put a lot of wood through that thing, and it's performed flawlessly. But as they say, good things can get better, and I think that's the case in this situation. Woodland Mills has now come out with some modifications to their existing lineup. They came out with some anniversary additions of their sawmills. The one I'm going to talk about today is the HM130 Max. That thing has added some features to it from previous models, like the one I own, that makes it even that much better. I'm going to show you that today. So guys, hold on here. I appreciate you all being here. And uh, let's go have a look at their website and we'll detail some of those specifics that I think will really be a benefit if you guys decide to pick one of these HM130 Maxes up. All right, so here we are here. We're on the Woodland Mills website and I am in Canada, hence I have the Canadian version of the website up. So the prices you see are in Canadian dollars. But this website here, it's gonna give you the opportunity to check out that HM130 Max. So let's do that. I'm gonna click on portable sawmills. And as you can see here, it starts off by showing you all the models that are available. The one I mentioned is right here, the HM130 Max. Just the sawmill, so no trailer or anything like that. You're at $46.99 Canadian. Now that's great and all, and I think that's an excellent value. Why I think so is because some of the changes that they've made to the sawmill that is gonna even improve on what I have, which was the old HM130. Some of those changes are highlighted here. They got pictures of all these things. This is one of the details I wanna point out, and this is kind of a safety detail. My sawmill, my HM130, did not have this yellow guard. What that meant was the blade was exposed while the sawmill was running. Small things like this, although they may not add a lot of value, um, well, at least um, to your cutting, they may, well, they may very well add some value in their safety. Okay, so this is a good addition here. Now, looking past this yellow guard here, what you'll see is what Woodland Mills calls their auto-locking adjustable blade guide. That's a step up from the HM130 that I've used in that it automatically locks into place. It's basically a, a push and a pull, and you guys can check out that push and pull by looking at their video, but it's basically a push and a pull motion with your arm, and then all these little dots, these are depressions in this metal arm that will lock into place, so you don't have to tighten or loosen any, uh, any knobs or any, um, any handles in order to lock them into place it automatically does it. So that's a very convenient feature and a feature that might make your cutting a little bit more efficient. So that's really good, I really like that. Definitely a step up. Another step up on this product, if you have a look here, it's the auto locking saw head. So instead of having to maneuver your hand so that you manually lock the lever into place, you can now just let go of it and it will, with the help of a spring, lock itself into the position you choose. This is excellent, and this is something that, um, it sort of saves one step, and if you ask me, all the steps you can save will lead up to save time, and might, might lead up in the long run to uh, more efficiency and maximize what I can cut in a day. So the auto locking saw head, really a good step up, and uh, definitely something you're gonna find on the HM130 Max. This is a really big step up here, in my opinion, the standard engine option you're gonna get with this sawmill is an electric start, 14 horsepower Kohler. You guys can see it right here. This is the same engine that I have on my older HM130, with the exception, mine did not come with electric start. It still pulls over really easily with the recoil start, but if I had the option to get an electric start, definitely I would get one. What makes this thing really, really special is the fact that it doesn't just come with electric start, it also comes with the recoil start. So for whatever reason, if your battery's dead or maybe you didn't, uh, you didn't buy a battery in time, you don't have to wait for the store to open to get the battery, you go out there, pull the handle, you can still fire that thing right up. So that's a really good, really good feature, having electric start with the recoil as an option as well. Okay, so that engine, proven over time that it's a really solid runner, 
here in Canada, especially where I live, negative 35 Celsius up to positive plus 35 Celsius is not uncommon. And that, uh, that fluctuation hasn't, hasn't done any, uh, anything to this engine. It still fires right up each and every time. So another HM130 Max improvement electric start. This one especially is a, is a nice change and something that I really wish I had on my older HM130. What that is, it's a, it's a gas and go operation. So when you press the handle, see this little black handle here? When you press that or the lever, the engine starts, the centrifugal clutch takes over, the blade starts to move. What this also does, and this didn't happen with my older sawmill, my older HM130, but this lever, when you press it, also triggers the lubrication to start flowing out onto the blade. So it's a two for one deal here. The blade starts moving when you press that lever, but so does the lubricant. So that's one less step. You don't have to remember to turn the lever like I do. You can actually just press the lever, this black one here, and uh, it gives you lubrication as well as the blade movement. Okay, great thing there in my opinion. Another great thing here is they've redesigned the handle. See this handle here? It used to be sort of a D shape, and it used to mount a little bit up here and a little bit down here. It didn't give you the same, I guess the same uh, functionality as this new, this new handle. It didn't give you the full range of motion. You could adjust it a little bit, meaning you could move the position of that black lever, but you didn't have the ability to rotate anything. In this case, you can rotate this entire handle upwards, downwards, especially important if you have a trailer. If you're going to put your sawmill on a trailer or raise it off the ground a bit, nothing worse than having to push the sawmill with your arms way above your head, right? So you having that av availability to lower that handle down really makes life easier. Uh, on that point, right down near that lever is the green lever with black handles, which controls the blade tension. What's awesome about this new HM130 Max, you no longer need tools to change a blade. That in itself is, is probably a big selling feature to me if I was in the market to buy another sawmill. When I change my blades, I gotta make sure I have my torque wrench handy because I have to re-torque the blade to 25 foot-pounds. If I can't find my torque wrench because I took it up to my shop and left it there, well, guess who's walking all the way back to the house to get the uh, get the torque wrench? I am. So having the ability to change a blade without tools, that's a, that's a bonus in my book and definitely something I would uh, put up high on my priority list if I was buying a new sawmill. Okay, you can see that here, um, the toolless blade change. Now, on this point, and this for those of you who already own a Woodland Mills, uh, an older version like I do, you will notice a little difference here, and it, it's not really mentioned in this in this uh, website. The difference is how you can tension the belt. See this V groove belt here. This belt, for me to tension it, I would use a very similar system, but it, but it doesn't it doesn't work quite the same. How I would tension it is I would have to loosen off the bolts that mount the engine to the overall I guess frame of the of the mill. In this case, you don't have to touch the engine bolts at all. You don't unbolt it from the frame. What you do is you can loosen this one bolt and see this new mechanism here, this gray steel mechanism. It sort of looks like a, a hockey stick. You can make all the adjustments to this one idler pulley to tension that belt. That's really an improvement because whenever I have to loosen off the engine mounts, it ends up being quite a long process because there's four bolts for the engine mounts. And uh, loosening those off takes time. It's up underneath the engine, so I have to get down and sort of torque my neck up to see it. This big improvement. So uh, look to this as uh, a really good feature of the new HM130 Max. That's it. Guys, that's it. Those are the big features. And I think um, if, if you guys are in the market for a sawmill, think about those things as some really good improvements. This is coming from someone who's cut a lot of wood with a very similar model of Woodland Mills, the HM130. And I can tell you, if I had the choice today of getting a sawmill with these features or not, I would definitely be trading in my old sawmill for the new one just to have some of these features. I think it'll definitely uh, speed up productivity 
and it'll uh, make things safer, especially that yellow guard I mentioned. And uh, it'll definitely alleviate some changing a blade when you forget your torque wrench is a pain because you need that torque wrench. If I had the choice not to need it and use this sawmill, that would be amazing. All right, guys, that's it for me. I just wanted to bring this to your attention. This seems like a pretty solid product. Hopefully I can try to get my hands on one of these at some point down the road, at least try it out because I think this thing will uh, definitely be a bit of a, a game changer for Woodland Mills. And guys, definitely a solid unit to check out. Any questions at all, put it down below. If you have experience with it, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and uh, before long, I'll be back out at my mill and putting some sawdust up in the air. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Take care.